We are sitting here at 6N2 with a buy. We can relax. We can chill out a bit. We can enjoy the process, enjoy the journey that is 6 and 2. It's very hard to, I think, to find. Sure, you can critique some little things about our game, about the O-line, about the run defense, about certain of these things. You know, there's still the talk around receiver number two, which I it just does my head in so much. Yeah, it would be great to get a receiver in Omar Khan. No, he's not sitting on his hands. He's always working. But I know Steel Nation wants a little bit more, a little bit extra. And things could be happening in the next few days over the over the next two weeks when we verse the commanders after the bye. But now is a good time for our Steelers to get healthy, to enjoy the 6-2. and two. Um, in, If you would have said to me at the very beginning of the season, hey, Mark, your team, your Steelers are going to lead the AFC North coming first, then it goes Ravens, then, then, then the Bengals and Browns, I'd be cheering because I am cheering right now. Like this is a good sign. That we're a good football team. It's about time to buy right in, to jump on the train and start start going all the way for the station to New Orleans, uh, like my good uh, good mate Bri- uh, Brian McFadden says. So I'll play it in a, few, in a few moments' time. I love that clip when Brian Mac- McFadden says, all the way to New Orleans, gas up the cars, let's go. I'll play it soon. Before I do, though, um, I do want to get, uh, go through some roster updates and some things that have been happening with our Steelers uh, from, from last night. And also, the big news was, that uh, DJ play like a Raven. Ravens are trading for receiver Jonte Johnson uh, to the Baltimore Ravens. Obviously, it didn't work out there with the Panthers. Um, their quarterback situation is a bit, oh, how's it going? They, they tried playing Andy Dalton. Uh, didn't work out. With, I think Bryce Young's coming back in now. That team is a, is a, is a they're selling to they, sell, they They acquired the Panthers. Uh, Panthers acquired him from us. We got Dante Jackson. Now he's a Baltimore Raven. I don't think in the rules, too, I don't think the Steelers could go and get him back. But do we, do we really need Deontay Johnson back? I don't think so either. Any case, DJ, I liked him when he was here. I was trying to defend him as much as I could. But the word drops, there were some funny plays. Him falling backwards into a tackle was quite odd. But now he's going to play the Steelers twice. And we have our we have our bye. We versus the Commanders. Then we versus the, the Ravens at home. So DJ is coming back to Heinz Field in about two or three weeks' time. So that is big news. Uh, the Ravens are going or trying to go all in to win a Super Bowl. Um, of course, they lost to the Browns the other day, which was really funny. Um, but yeah, the Deontay Johnson is now Baltimore Ravens. So that's something really interesting to watch. And can Lamar Jackson get him the ball, right? Now, this will be fun because we get to see Dante Jackson, the guy who we traded for, go up against him. And we get to see JPJ or Minka. And I tell you what, Minka... I have been reading some comments around the internet, and I really shouldn't, but I always do, is is Minka. Uh, oh, Minka's been really quiet, but he's setting things up. And he made a big – he's not been quiet. He made a big hit on one of the players yesterday, forced him out of bounds, knocked the ball out, and then it was a third down, I think it was a fourth down, and then, then we had to uh, – uh, they punted the ball away. So I would, if I was DJ, I'd be looking out for Minka to, to man the middle of the field or – you know, play 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 his good role at safety and get ready for some physical hits because he knows how to play DJ. He knows how elusive he is. Look, DJ is a good receiver, but playing the Steelers, it's going to be a very, very uh, physical matchup. Also, I want to talk about is the roster update. Some some really things, some things going around the Steelers. Steelers have waived uh, linebacker A.D. Ogun, Ogunji. Sorry for my pronunciation to, from the active roster. I think he played yesterday. He filled in yesterday when there was like, there was TJ Watt, Highsmith, Jeremiah Moon played some snaps. And I think AG, uh, sorry, AD played yesterday. Now he's been released from the active roster. And they've terminated running back LaMichael P. Ride and cornerback Thomas Graham. Now this happens all over the, all over the season, like from week one or even in the off season, week one to, to week 17. They're always mixing and matching, um, getting, ri- getting rid of practice squad uh, players or bringing them back, cutting them, re-signing them. Happens all the time. It's just part of the business. So uh, with respect to those guys who had their, their contracts terminated, I hope they can find a, a uh, another team in the future or they'll come back on the practice squad in a few weeks' time. We'll see how it goes. But there could be a reason for this. It's about that time right now where Cameron Sutton is coming back to the Steelers. He has served his, his eight-game or nine-game suspension and I think it's this week he's allowed back in the building and he's coming back. Now, one big question is that I want to ask everyone in Steel Nation, because look, we, we, we want to know, 
Is Beanie Bishop going to keep his job? I think he should. I think Beanie Bishop should keep his job. But in terms of the news, Sutton is coming back to the facility. So via Steelers update, and it's going all around Twitter. So Steelers cornerback Cameron Sutton has officially been reinstated by the NFL, serving his eight-game suspension. And Sutton's presence would help bolster the Pittsburgh Steelers' defense in the second half of the season. Definitely would. Getting him back as a veteran and also other guys like, you know what, Terrell Edmonds, I saw him on the run back on the Calvin Austin punt return. He played a pretty key role in that too. He was he was moving out and clearing lanes and running down the sideline, um, you know, providing a, uh, an, a, an escort service to to the, to the end zone. Like Terrell Edmonds is back. We, we forget about that. Tyler Matakavich, he's trying to come back for teams. Uh, James Pierre, once we I think once we needed more more uh, room at Gunner, we need someone to come back. James Pierre re-signed back. So the Steelers are bringing back these guys that have been playing around with with their, their franchise for the last three or four years. Edmonds, Pierre, uh, Manikiewicz, and now Cameron Cameron Sutton uh, is coming back and he's, he's served his eight-game suspension. So the big thing is, what's going to happen? Do they use him in, in different nickel and dime packages? Um, we, I think we're going to still going to use JPJ on one side, Dante Jackson the other. Is it just good depth? Uh, does Beanie Bishop have his role as a starter? Has he has he done enough? He's done a lot, right? Made a few mistakes here and there, but it's football. But the last two games, he has three interceptions and one one game saving interception yesterday when Daniel Jones overthrew the ball. Where was it? Beanie Bishop was right there to connect, take it in, and end the show. So that's going to be something really interesting to watch is, is Cameron Sutton coming back and what kind of role does he play for the Steelers? So we've got two weeks now, one week off. And, and I think as TJ Watt said in a press conference, it's no time to go on holiday. It's just time to get back to health, get back to health. Um, the Steelers, I think, will try and which will try and get back called Daryl Patterson. He's going to be your third down running back. Can he play even a more role in the receiving game? I wouldn't mind seeing him get some some chances where the ball is 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 flung out wide to 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 the to the wide receiver in a screen. Set up a big screen, get him rolling, get that man in space, get Cordaro Patterson in space. And we're still yet to see him being used on the kickoff return because other teams are kicking this ball outside the end zone, not even allowing us to catch it in the, what do you call it, uh, the landing zone, which is really weird, and then taking it all away. So Patterson's coming back. He should be back to health, I think, after this week or the next week versus the Commanders. Nick Herbig is coming back. Um, I think he's been uh, reporters coming back, what I've been reading. And also Zach Frazier, I think he's around the same time. So this is a perfect time, perfect time for the Steelers to get healthy, 6-2. and two. Look, we lost two games versus Colts that sucked. Versus the Dallas Cowboys, we could have won that game. If you got a, uh, you know, if, if Derek Prescott looked the other way, Killebrew jumps on a ball, you win that game. But it's a good place to be 6-2. and two. There's absolutely zero complaints from me. Mike Tomlin made the right choice by using uh, Justin Fields at four and two. He, he used a backup quarterback. Then he switched to Wilson, and things went absolutely crazy uh, versus the Jets. He had a uh, he ran a run a touchdown in. He got two touchdowns, and also he threw a touchdown versus the Giants. Giants were a tough game too. I think I think some fans aren't giving the, the, a lot of credit towards the Giants. In that sense, yesterday when I watched it, it was a really fun game. A really fun game. The, the Giants' defensive front is awesome. Uh, Dexter Lawrence has like nine sacks in the season. He was pushing people out of the way. He was manhandling Ryan McCollum. He was taking care of business and moving guys back. Um, Jones, I think, still struggling to, to a certain to a certain part, but we're still figuring out the offense off his, offensive line. It did okay for my part. There was four sacks and was a, was a sack fumble from Russell Wilson. But like I always say, man, it, it's not picture perfect. It's football, right? And we got away with the win. We stuck, I did see people say, oh, that was, that was a, a weak win because we only beat them by eight points. Don't care. At this point, you just keep you just keep uh, winning games as best you can. TJ Watt and Highsmith had really big games on the outside. And yes, our offense is starting to click. But you go back and watch the game. That ball to Austin for the TD was friggin' amazing. That football pass from, from uh, Russell Wilson to Pickers, 47 yards in the air. If he just stays in bounds and doesn't Tony totes up out of bounds, and, and, and his momentum's going that way, he runs to the end zone. If Pickens gets his feet down, then we have a TD. If Jones doesn't grab the guy's face mask, we have a TD. The offense is playing good football. Now, can we add depth? For sure. But it's a good place to be 6-2. and two. A very, very good place. Because this week, we get to see the whole AFC West uh, versus the AFC North. I think it's the 
Denver Broncos versus the the, uh, the Ravens. It's the Chargers versus the Browns and the Raiders versus the Bengals. So we are cheering for the AFC West to go and beat those teams. Now, in a wild card scenario, you probably want to see the Browns beat the Chargers in that sense. But I still want to see all of the AFC North lose. And on our bye week, we we sit clear one game. Now, the Ravens can beat Denver because they got the new piece with, with, with Deontay Johnson and all those guys, Derrick Henry. But in terms of a Pittsburgh Steelers, like, you couldn't really ask for any, anything better. Six and two. Mike Tomlin deserves credit. The organization deserves credit. I think Cam, Minka, the TJ Watt, the leaders on this team deserve credit. Najee Harris is running crazy. You can name all these players. And in a few moments' time, in about two hours' time, We'll be doing a show called the HDU Awards uh, live with Steelers Nation Oz, that's me, and Steelers Dynasty Podcast with Bubba and Shane talking last well, last night's game, right? So if you guys are new to the channel and you're new to uh, Steelers Nation Oz, make sure you check out the live as well. They're a lot of fun. We give away five points, three points, two points, one point each. And at the very end of the season, I'm going to try and grab all the points together and send that player something, a gift, uh, a gift from Steel Nation Oz, a gift from Steelers Dynasty Podcast, because we're trying to find the the the, the best player on the team, the hooly dooly player of the year, the best player on the team. So look, it's a lot of fun. There are news happening. There are, there are roster moves happening. Will this, There's a few questions. Will the Steelers uh, go and tr- trade for a receiver? Possibly. I'm not going to, I'm not going to hang my, hang, hang my hat on it and go, okay, it's going to happen for sure. Um, the, the, the one thing for sure is, though, the Steelers are getting back to health. That is bringing back Nick Herbig. That is bringing back um, the running back, Patterson. That is getting guys back like that. Now, do they need another receiver in the rotation? Possibly two. But they're also using like four or five tight ends. Pruitt was used last night. Darnell was used last night. Um, who else? Rodney Williams was used in teams. I'm just reading off the tight ends. Like they, And they're using bits and pieces of Connor Haywood. Not as much as I would like to see Connor Haywood being used. But they're using Frymouth, and he needs to be, be used more too. Frymouth, Darnell, Pruitt, Haywood, and Rodney Williams, five tight ends. They're using a lot of tight ends, and they're kind of like their pass catchers. Like, we haven't got this true receiver too. At the same time, Jefferson stepped up in a, in a, in a big play in a 37, 40-yard gain. Austin had, a, had a, a, uh, one of his best games for a stealer. The punt return and the ca- and the catching and, and, and the TD from Wilson. So... Yes, receiver two or this this idea about getting a receiver or you know trading for someone, it would help our Steelers 100%. But is it overall you know necessary? Maybe not because we are six and two and we've, we've done it that way by run of the rock, rock, play action pass, Warren's getting back healthy. I believe in this team. This team can be a playoff team. This team can start to move pieces around to, to get the, the, the defense, can show them the way. And if, there's, if they keep them teams under 20 points, this team can score 24, 27 points. They could be, they could be a Super Bowl team. All righty, Steel Nation. I'll see you later. I'll see you guys later on for the HDU uh, Awards Live with Steel Nation Oz and Steelers Dynasty Podcast. Oh, before I forget, uh, i got to play it again because I love playing this clip. Here's my mate, Brian McFadden, talking about the Steelers going to the Super Bowl. You know, The road to New Orleans will start in a few months. Let's get ready for the ride. Gas up the cars, baby. Let's get to New Orleans. <laughs> Gas it up. Let's go. Hey, thank you, VMAC, mate. I'll see you all later. As always, here we go, Steelers. Here, yeah, here we, we go, go, Steelers. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs>